Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone, in this group of the mitral valve stenosis, uh, we are going to divide it in two parts. Part one, anatomy and pathophysiology, and part uh, two will be echocardiography evaluation that will be uploaded uh, on the member group. Uh, mitral valve is a, a valve between the left atrium and left ventricle that we call the bicuspid uh, atrioventricular valve or because of the shape of like the bishop hat uh, mitre, they called it mitral valve, leaf, uh, mitral valve. Mitral valve have two leaflets, anterior, here, as you can see, this one is a cephalic or surgical view, means you're cutting the heart at the base and watching from the head of the patient. So this is surgical view. Uh, it has two leaflets, anterior, next to the aorta, and posterior. And if you can see on the front at the surface, it looks like it uh, has a tree tuberosity or a dentation it, because it looks like that scallop uh, shelf, uh, they called it uh, scallops. They are uh, three scallops uh, based on the side of that. They take the no uh, name and number, anterior one, two, anterior three, and posterior P1 to P3. The connection of those uh, two uh, leaflets, we called it commissure, anterior is anterior close to the left atrial appendage and posterior other side. As you can see, anterior mitral valve is wider and posterior mitral valve is narrower but longer. The structure that keep uh, mitral valve functioning correctly, we call it subvalvular apertus that included papillary muscle and corda tendine and the myocardium wall that those uh, holding the ring of the mitral valve and papillary muscle. The pattern of the uh, connecting those corda tendine to the mitral valve is unique and amazing. We have three types of the corda tendine. It is like the tendon that connected from the tip of the papillary muscle, that finger-shaped muscle that come from the free wall and septum. We have two papillary muscle, anterolateral and posteromedial. So each of those uh, papillary muscle connected to each of those, not that one by one. So uh, each of those papillary muscle connect to anterior and posterior leaflet. And the between them, as you can see here, it create a, a free space and usually we use mitral valve clips and we put it at this level, at almost mid of the, uh, those uh, mitral valve leaflets. The other part, as you can see, is full of the corda tendine. Only in this part is free of corda tendine. We can put uh, freely through the catheter uh, and uh, install the uh, clips. As you can see here, uh, those uh, connection, orientation, and shape of those papillary muscle and spatial shape of the mitral valve during systole. You can see curving and cave shape is a unique uh, shape. Any changes to those a new structure of the subapartus of the mitral valve, it can affect the function of the mitral valve leaflet. The, uh, surf, uh, the orifice of the mitral valve uh, in normal is uh, between four to six square centimeter. Orientation of the mitral valve in the body is uh, unique and you have to know how it looks like. Here is uh, we have almost coronal, oblique coronal uh, image of the hard at the mitral valve level, as you can see those uh, cusp three, this is leaflet anterior and posterior, A1 to A3 and P1 to P3. It looks like cutting the heart at this level and watching from the this side. So 
if you can see here the is this is here is superior here head of the patient be uh, uh, head of the person and here is foot anterior and posterior as you can see alignment is a little not vertical not horizontal but it's some kind of the oblique up and down superior posterior and the bottom commissure anterior inferior but on the imaging on echo it uh, because the image is turning this is the monitor you can see but reality we put probe at this level here is RVOT so if you put probe here machine uh, image whatever you see on the monitor is has been turned it looks like you are scanning reality is like this but uh, on the monitor it has been turned almost 45 degree and you see whatever is here is reality this is the way you can you see it on the echo uh, almost horizontal it looks like what in reality no is oblique and here you can see popular muzzle the same uh, if you notice popular muzzle are at this level uh, these two popular muzzle, one of them a little closer to the posterior and those corda tendini attached to both of them from this side to the anterior posterior and anterolateral to the anterior and posterior the same uh, you can see orientation just not that at middle midline is a little both of them to the posterior the most common cause of the uh, mitral stenosis is still is aromatic fever but in development country it uh, the incidence has decreased and more calcification and fibrosclerosis and aging uh, is most common case but in the most other country still aromatic fever is the most common cases other causes can be radiation sclerotic causes sclerotic in many years after radiation not right away we have some uh, congenital uh, anomaly like the bi orifice mitral valve or parachute mitral valve or ring tertiary atrium three triatrium three atrium uh, we have other uh, tumor inflammatory disease like the SLE rheumatic fever and other storage disease or inflammatory and infection like that endocarditis uh, those other causes that are not uh, common they are uh, unusual and sometimes we have a functional MS like that myxoma can cause uh, mitral stenosis rheumatic fever is a most common and uh, it's uh, consequence of the autoimmune disease after the streptococcus infection doesn't matter pharyngitis or even after uh, streptococcus infection on the skin or other part of the body usually uh, this in this uh, situation rheumatic fever because of inflammation the commissure of the uh, mitral valve they stick together and little by little the orifice decreased and those corda tendini become thicker and shrunk and uh, become tough rough and so they are not expanding easy and uh, with together plus the uh, fusion of the commissure finally cause mitral stenosis that most of the time it come with the mitral regurgitation too unfortunately or fortunately mitral stenosis has very uh, long uh, process usually until the mitral valve orifice doesn't come to below two centimeter it doesn't cause any symptom but after that with the increasing left atrial pressure finally pressure on the uh, pulmonary goes high and start getting uh, congestive uh, pulmonary pulmonary congestion that cause pulmonary edema and finally pulmonary edema ca causes shortness of breath usually this process from the beginning catching rheumatic fever starting rheumatic fever um, to become symptomatic usually take decades usually between a average 10 years so it's not that right away 
that rheumatic acute rheumatic fever has uh, its specific symptom and sign that is all, uh, beyond this uh, presentation the most common uh, symptom for a patient uh, with the significant mitral stenosis will be orthopnea and uh, PND, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. The mechanism for both of them are almost the same. Uh, with, when the uh, patient lay down, the interstitial fluid go back to the circulation system and it causes some kind of volume overload and that causes pulmonary edema and uh, finally shortness of breath that this patient comes complain after laying down start coughing and they sitting and then after 30 minutes something like that they feel much better then they go fall asleep the body catch up and set up the different level a little uh, diuretic of the left atrial appendix secrete and uh, they go uh, pee and finally they feel better and they lay down and sleep with increasing the pressure those become worse and then uh, with the exercise or activity and finally at the, some stage get it uh, pulmonary pressure high symptom become worse and if it goes uh, not treated it goes to the right failure and all those symptoms from the right failure too the other symptom all dependent of the how much pulmonary pressure is high how much severe of pressure on the right side and how much effect on the other organs like the intestine uh, liver and all those other symptom and uh, complication like the thromboembolism complication the most finding uh, important and significant finding is murmur rumbling murmur uh, almost meets diastolic left apical left apex especially when we turn the patient to the left lateral decubitus there are not other significant symptoms because beside of the pulmonary finding of pulmonary congestion and pulmonary edema on EKG, we will, uh, if the pressure has been long time and left atrial enlarged, in that case, enlargement of the left atrium, it expressed itself by the P mitral, that is, uh, as you know, mitral and uh, left atrial and left a uh, right atrium, both together create P wave. The left atrium depolarized a little later. That is the reason on the V vector right, uh, precordial right, like the V1 or V2 or uh, reverse V1, we can see a little sinus shape. In the when we have left atrial enlargement, the depolarization of the left atrium take longer, and sometimes when it's prominent, it create two peak that. We call it uh, P mitral. Uh, that is typical, and 90% belong to the uh, patient with MS. Here, as you can see, the characteristic of the EKG finding on mitral, uh, P mitral is that two peak, the time between them, distance between two peaks is more than 40 milliseconds. Next uh, part will be echocardiogra echocardiographic evaluation uh, that will be uploaded in the uh, member group. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.